Hey people, John here from Fast Films, and today we're going through a 2006 historical drama movie called Marie Antoinette. A voice narrates that in order for the peace alliance between Austria and France to work, Marie has to marry the Prince of France and become the new queen. Marie Antoinette, Princess of Austria wakes up to prepare for her trip to France. Her mother hands her over to her caretaker and instructs her to listen to him when they get to the palace in France. Marie enters her carriage with her pet dog and her escorts, accompanied by her entourage. They begin the long ride to France. After some days, they reach France and she receives a welcoming party. She is introduced to her hostess who instructs her to bid her escorts from Vienna farewell including her pet dog. The maidens then give a new dress to Marie to wear. Then she commences her journey to the courts of France. Upon arrival, she is introduced to the Prime Minister of Westminster. She courtesies him and thanks him for being the one responsible for her happiness. Together they meet the King of France, King Louis XV. The king welcomes her and introduces her to her fiancé, Louis XVI. She courtesies him and then gives him a hug. Together they all ride to the palace. Marie is welcomed by a large crowd of people who just continue to stare at her while she nervously makes her way into the palace. In the palace, she goes on a tour of the building and finally arrives at her room. In the next scene, Marie Antoinette arrives at the cathedral where she is to be married to Louis XVI. After the ceremony, they proceed to the wedding banquet where they have their first dance. They are applauded by everyone after the dance. The king makes a toast to the newlyweds and makes his expectations for an heir known to the couples. After the celebrations, Marie and Louis proceed to the castle. The marriage's first night ceremony is performed as the couples get into bed. The next morning, the king is informed that the marriage has not been taken place. Marie wakes up and is attended to by the maidens at the palace. She receives all the instructions concerning her privileges as the Countess of Dauphine. Marie finds the traditions utterly ridiculous. Marie and Louis have breakfast together for the first time and during the meal, she talks to him about his key-making hobby. Afterward, Marie attends a church service. During the procession, Marie and her handmaiden make fun of an old woman in the church dozing off during the sermon. Marie and her handmaiden are cautioned by Marie's courtier Anne. Later that evening, the royal family members gather to have dinner, and they are joined by Madame Du Barry. Marie asks Anne who Du Barry was. She is then told that Jean is King Louis's mistress. Everyone at the table continues to gossip about Jean's uncouth behavior and how long they think Marie would last in her marriage. The next day Marie's husband Louis goes on hunting. When he returns home, Marie tries to get come closer to him but he tells her that he is too tired. The next day, Marie meets Florimond. Florimond brings instructions from Marie's mother in Vienna to desist from riding horses because it could cause infertility. He also tells Marie that there are high expectations of her and that she needs to find a way to make her marriage successful with Louis XVI as soon as possible. Before Florimond takes his leave, he delivers a letter to Marie from her mother. In the letter, Marie's mother expresses her concern over Marie's inability to make her marriage work. She blames Marie for not being able to inspire passion in her husband and thus puts the alliance between Austria and France at risk. That night, Marie once again tries to come closer to him but Louis XVI refuses and wishes her good night instead. The next day Marie, Louis, and some of his friends gather to have drinks. In the next scene, Marie's mother writes to Marie warning her against the king's mistress Du Barry. Marie continues to snob Du Barry when they meet in public gatherings. This act earns her another reprimand from Florimond. Florimond tells her that not appreciating Du Barry means that Marie is publicly criticizing the king's choices. Florimond encourages her to talk to Du Barry in order for her to remain in the king's good graces. In the next scene, Marie and her husband Louis approach the king and Du Barry. After bowing to the king, Marie says a few words to Du Barry. The act is appreciated by both the king and Du Barry. Meanwhile, Marie mentions to Louis that it would be the last time she ever speaks to Du Barry. Later on, Florimond meets with Marie and discusses the crisis going on between Russia and Poland. He urges Marie that her mother relies on her to smooth over the crisis. Up next, Florimond meets with the king and the king assures Florimond that he has no plans to end the alliance between Austria and France. Louis also expresses worries over Marie and her husband's inability to come close to each other and copulates. King Louis asks Florimond to ask the doctor to come and check Marie and her husband. Marie Antoinette received another letter from her mother who shares the news of Marie's siblings as one of the siblings just had a child and the other is recently married. Marie's mother writes in her letter that it is her duty to make sure that the marriage is gonna work and that her position in the royal family is not solidified until she produces an heir. Later at night, Marie and Louis make an effort to come closer but give up on trying. At breakfast the next day, Marie and Louis receive news that Marie's brother-in-law just delivered a baby boy. Marie and Louis go to congratulate them. Although Marie is happy for them, she's also heartbroken and goes back to her room to cry. 
Marie totally forgets about her marriage's dilemma or having kids. She instead spends all her time shopping, eating junk food, partying, and gambling with her courtiers. Her friends suggest that they go to Paris for the Master Ball. Marie hesitates to say that the Master Ball is strictly by invitation. Her friend tells her that since it was the Master Ball, no one would know that they are there. They get on a carriage and head to Paris for the ball, wearing a mask to hide their identity. Marie and her courtiers have a great time at the ball by dancing, singing, and drinking. Marie catches the eye of a young man at the ball. He approaches her and they have a short conversation. He introduces himself to her as Count Fersen, but when he asks to know who she is, she walks away. Marie and Louis arrive back at the palace and are informed that the king has fallen sick with smallpox. The priest informs Louis that they cannot receive the king's confession rites because he still has a mistress. On his sickbed, King Louis writes a letter to Madame du Barry, breaking off his relationship with her. King Louis requests to see Madame du Barry, but he is told that she has left the palace. Some moments later, the announcement of the king's passing is made to Marie and her husband Louis. At a ceremony in the church, Marie's husband Louis crowned King Louis XVI, the new king of France. In the next scene, a party is thrown in honor of Queen Marie's birthday. They spend the night dancing, drinking, and gambling. King Louis pleads with Marie that they return to bed, but she tells him she would like them to watch the sunrise together. He declines her request and wishes her luck with her gambling. Marie and her friends take a run to the riverbank, where they all watch the sunrise. The next day, Marie takes a walk down the garden and suggests to the royal gardener that she would like to add some new trees to the garden. Florimond informs her that she has already spent 50,000 at that moment and that she has nothing left for charities. She tells him that she would ask King Louis for some more money. At a meeting with his advisors, King Louis is told that America is requesting help in their revolution. They inform him that assisting America would be a good way for France to send a strong message to Britain. King Louis asks them if France's finances can accommodate the request. The advisors tell Louis that taxes would have to be raised a little. King Louis sees that supporting America would make France look stronger in comparison to other European countries, so he instructs that funds would be sent to America. Later on, while taking piano lessons, Marie is informed that her brother Joseph has arrived at the palace. She gleefully goes to welcome him and they have tea together. Joseph cautions her about her choice of friends and gambling habits. He also tells her that he is going to have a talk with the young King Louis. Joseph successfully educates King Louis on how their marriage can work. King Louis and Marie copulate successfully. Marie conceives and gives birth to a baby girl named Princess Marie Therese. The baby is taken away by the maids to be nursed despite Marie's wishes to nurse the child herself. King Louis presents Marie with the keys to the mansion for her personal use. Recuperating at her new mansion, Marie explores her passion for art and organizes a play where she acts and sings. King Louis XVI informs her of a welcome ball for France soldiers that went to assist in the American Revolution. Marie and her courtiers are excited to attend the ball. The queen is introduced to the soldiers and she reunites with Count Fersen again. Up next, Marie and Count Fersen begin a romantic affair with each other, but after a while, Fersen has to go back to America. Marie becomes sad when Fersen leaves and asks King Louis to go to Paris with her. King Louis denies the request and this makes her sad. She leaves for her room and continues thinking of Fersen. At a meeting with his advisors, they complain to the king that sending troops to America is costing France a lot of money. King Louis decides to continue aiding America as a show of strength. Marie and her courtiers discuss rumors that have been spread about her by the French newspapers. Meanwhile, she decides to do something to help the hunger crisis in the country. In the next scene, Marie receives news of her mother's passing. Marie conceives and delivers a baby boy, the heir of France. Despite delivering an heir for France, French citizens continue to criticize her spending habits. The people of France begin to call her Madame Deficits. Marie begins to focus less on social life and begins to spend more time with family. Later on, the king and queen are informed that the Bastille fortress has been stormed by an angry mob. This prompts the advisors of the king to recommend that the princes and princesses should leave for a more secure location. Despite the recommendation that the king and queen vacate the palace for a safer place, they both decide to stay with each other in France. Queen Marie bid her friends and associates farewell as they left the palace courts. The king and queen are once again asked to leave the palace for a safer place but they refuse. Later that night the palace is stormed by an angry mob, they decide to immediately vacate the palace. Marie boldly comes to the balcony to address the angry mob. When the mob continues to yell angrily, she bows to them and they stop screaming for a while. Marie returns to join the king while the mob continues to yell angrily in the palace courts. The next morning, the king, queen, and their children vacated the palace and made their way to Tuileries. The last scene shows that the queen's room in the palace has been destroyed by the mob and the movie ends here.
Thanks for watching guys.